Well, hey there everyone, it's Uptown and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be reviewing a couple of products sent to me by Cosgear. Using my cosplay of my original character Verity as an example, I'm going to be testing these products out as well as walking you guys through it. So let's get started. Cosgear sent me two products to review for you guys, the first being their Cos Tail and the second being their newest, which is the Cos Band Pro. It's what I use to keep these horns on my head and this moving tail on my butt. So let's talk a little about these products and what they're supposed to do. According to Costgear, the cost tail is basically a strap-on tail that you wear with your costumes. It is a bare bones skeletal structure that also senses your movements and will move according to what you're doing. It has a motor on the inside and the tail itself is adjustable in terms of length. And the biggest perk is that you can craft interchangeable covers for this tail so that it works with all of your different characters. Next up, there's the Cost Band Pro, which I'm actually going to address later in this video and tell you about. So for now, bear with me as we stick with the Cost Tail for a while. I'm also gonna take this moment to say that I liked their packaging. That's all, that's all I wanted to say about that. In the Cost Tail box, I found the charging cord for the rechargeable battery pack, some little bits of documentation and welcome messages, very cute, and the user manual, which definitely came in handy. Also included were nylon straps for the harness itself. In general, assembling the cost tail was actually a pretty painless process. As long as you read the user manual and don't try to skip ahead anywhere, you're gonna be fine and it's pretty straightforward. But I did have a pretty frustrating issue when it came to the wire that you put up the core of the tail. Based on their wording, I thought that you could have your cost tail at its longest length, use the longest wire, and still be able to choose what shape you wanted your cost tail to sit. Turns out it's actually not that simple. To make a long story short, if you want your tail shape to be straighter, you need your tail length to be shorter in order for the wire you use in the center to be long enough to reach where it needs to go to get tightened in place and hold the shape. If you want a curvier and perkier tail, however, you can use all of the segments and the longest wire and it still works. Aside from that whole hiccup though, the rest of the assembly process really wasn't that difficult and was pretty smooth. The next step was to design my tail cover pattern. So Verity's tail is pretty darn skinny and then the end has more of a spade shape on the end that for her is basically a heart shape. So I drafted out what I wanted on paper, cut it out and made myself a pattern piece. Next up, I wanted to add a little bit of extra structure to the end of my cost tail so that the tip of my pattern, which now had this extra shape on it that I just drafted, wouldn't just flop over and look really stupid when it was all put together. So what I did was I took a simple wire hanger, untwisted it, reshaped it with some pliers, and basically created my own extension to the end of my cost tail just so that it had some structure. Also, if you're gonna do this, please use pliers and don't try to do this with your bare hands unless you have like wicked awesome gloves or something because I wrecked my fingertips trying to do this the first time. So pliers are 10 out of 10 recommended. Also, if you look to the lower left corner, you can see one of my cats, Avi. Hi, sweet boy, I love you. Next up is drafting the pattern for the tail cover itself. On Costgear's website, you can find a downloadable pattern template, which is basically their standard tail cover that you can use to make a cat tail and things of that sort. However, the pattern that they provide is not to scale, meaning that it's not big enough, which means you have to scale it up yourself, which is what I'm doing here, just based off of the measurements they provide, or you have to go through a whole digital process of scaling it up before you print it out and it's a whole thing. I am a firm believer that cosplay resources should be accessible to as many people as possible regardless of their skill level. This was me patterning this out by hand with having a basic knowledge of sewing and pattern drafting already under my belt. I can't imagine somebody trying to do this who's never done any of those things before. This would be incredibly intimidating. So my advice to Costgear would be to take the pattern that you already have online 
and split it into multiple pages for somebody to print out, and each page is already scaled up to properly fit a cost tail. All someone would have to do is print out all of the pages with the different parts, tape them together, and create the larger pattern from that. It takes out this whole manual finicky side of the process that leaves so much room for error. Once I had my paper pattern all complete, the next thing I did was cut it all out of fabric. I decided to use a four-way stretch matte black knit fabric, very similar to neoprene for Verity's tail. But depending on what final look you're going for or what character you're cosplaying, you can pick any fabric you want. This pattern is designed to be one piece of material that is sewn up the underside of the tail, meaning that there's only one seam. This means you only have to cut your pattern out of one single piece of fabric. What I'm doing now is using a thin sheet of felt to act as an extra layer of cushioning to go underneath my main stretch fabric. The reason I'm doing this is that I don't want my fabric to bunch around all the little segments that make up the costail and make it look really bony and lumpy and weird. So in an effort to try to smooth it out, I'm cutting out this felt using only the straight and narrow section of the costail pattern. I then put my fabric over my felt, folded them in half with right sides together, pinned it all in place, and stitched it down. Before turning the tail cover right side out, I took some fabric scissors and trimmed back the seam allowance of just the felt, so that once it was turned right side out, it would eliminate a lot of the excess bulk. After that, I turned the tube that I just made right side out. I then carefully shimmied the tail cover onto my cost tail. For the end piece of Verity's tail, I followed very much the same steps. I cut my pattern piece out of two layers of fabric this time, put right sides together, pinned it in place, and stitched it down. But this time I made sure to leave an opening at the very top of it in the center. This is where it's going to attach to the rest of my tail cover to become one whole piece. If you're making a tail tip of a similar shape like this that has a lot of curves, when you turn it right side out it's going to look bunchy unless you clip your corners and your curves. So cut tiny notches out of your fabric into your seam allowance so that when you turn it right side out, it has room to fold over itself and you get a smoother look on the outside. In order to keep the tip of Verity's tail from looking too flat and floppy and to give it some actual volume and depth as if it might possibly be a more realistic tail, I'm going to be treating this heart-shaped thing like a tiny pillow and I'm going to be stuffing it. I decided to use polyfill for this purpose, which was actually super duper effective. I ripped off chunks of this and balled them up and stuffed them into the tail tip, making sure to distribute it as evenly as possible until it was full enough to the point where I liked the volume and the shape that it came up with. Next, I just took the tail tip, pinned it in place over the tail cover, and hand stitched it in place using a ladder stitch. After the tip was all stitched on, I was pretty excited because this meant that the tail cover itself was actually all in one piece finally, and that is pretty cool. The very last step about this cost tail cover is to make sure that it actually stays on the cost tail, and you do that by installing in some Velcro. Cost Gear's tail cover pattern tells you whereabouts to put your Velcro on the cover, but you do need to install the other half onto the cost tail itself so it has something to stick to. So I chose to use contact cement. To attach the other half of my Velcro to the tail cover, I decided to stick with the glue thing and use some fabric glue. To make sure that I got the placement correct, I first stuck the Velcro together and then pinned my tail cover to the half of the my Velcro that still needed attaching. I then peeled the Velcro apart and slowly but surely unpinned my Velcro from my tail cover section by section and applied fabric glue as I went to make sure I didn't lose track of where it needed to get stuck down. And with that, my cost tail was officially done. It actually gets even easier from here, so now it's time to move on and talk about the Costband Pro. Once again, 10 out of 10 on packaging. In addition to sending me the Costband Pro itself, Costgear also sent me a bunch of accessories to go with it, which was super cool to unpackage. These included their standard black cat ears, some super cute little plastic ear frames, as well as these really colorful and super soft ear covers to customize your look. So what is the Costband for and what is it designed to do? This thing is straight up genius. It is so simple, but it is a game changer. What the Costband Pro is, is an adjustable elastic headband with a velvet lining so that it stays comfortable on your head but doesn't slip around. It has Velcro in the back so it can fit multiple head sizes. And the coolest thing about it is that inside it has magnets. And not just any magnets, these magnets are incredibly powerful. You can literally say goodbye to gluing on hair clips or precariously balancing 
balancing all of your hats, crowns, animal ears on your wig and hope that they don't fall off during con because this thing is literally going to solve all of your problems. These two small but incredibly beefy magnets that are in the Cosband Pro are in between the elastic and velvet lining layers, which means you can actually push them around with your fingers and adjust where they're going to sit on the Cosband. So all those props you need to stick to your head, you can choose where they sit and it works for all of your different needs. All you have to do is glue magnets onto your props and they'll stick to the cost band even through your wig. You can order multiple sizes of magnets from Costgear's website. You can also find the same type of magnet at hardware stores. I decided to make a new pair of horns for my Verity cosplay so I could incorporate the cost band pro. I ended up using really cost-effective and lightweight materials for this and it came out surprisingly well. So if you need to make like a quick and dirty pair of horns that actually look pretty good and won't fall off because they weigh practically nothing, I would definitely recommend a method similar to this. To make the base shape of my horns, I took aluminum foil and used big pieces of it to crumple up and twist and mold into shape until I got a silhouette that I liked. I then repeated the very same process to make a second horn that matched the first. To make my horns smooth on the outside, I decided to coat them in a thin layer of foam clay. You can find this at Michael's craft stores, or if you'd like, you can also use air dry clay, which does basically the same thing. It just has a slightly different texture on the outside when it's dry. After covering the horns in a layer of foam clay that was just thick enough to cover the aluminum foil, I dipped my fingertips in some water to go over the foam clay again, and this helped to smooth out any obvious lines or bumps or imperfections. I let both horns dry for a couple days and then they were ready to paint. I decided to use fabric paint for this process for a couple reasons. One, it was a better color match to the fabric that I used for my tail cover. And two, it seemed to apply better over top of the foam clay and gave me a much smoother end look. I did about two to three coats over both horns, let them dry, and then it was time to attach magnets. Costgear said you could hot glue these magnets onto your props, so I decided to hot glue these magnets to my props. Because of how insanely lightweight these horns were that I made, I decided to use the smallest size of magnet that Costgear provided, since I figured this would be more than enough to hold them up. Hot glue did work extremely well for me, as long as I took the hot glue up and around the edge of my magnets just enough to give it that little bit of extra grip and hold it onto the bottom of the horns. This means everything's finally done, and now it's time to demonstrate. Overall, both of these products performed beautifully. The Cosband Pro was like literal perfection and I have nothing but praise to give it. The Costail was a little bit trickier to use, especially if you're working by yourself. I did have to get help putting this on. That doesn't stop it from looking amazing though. It has an idle animation that it does even when you're standing still that's super cute and it moves effortlessly with you when you walk. You can hear the sound of the motor inside the costail moving it, but only if you're standing still or if you're in a really quiet space. That wire I had trouble with earlier though, it came loose while I was filming this. It only happened once though, and it was a quick fix. Just learn from my mistakes and make sure you push that core wire as far into that main unit as it will possibly go and make sure it is very, very tight. And then this will not happen to you and it works perfectly. I'm really excited to use my Costail and Costband Pro for future cosplay projects, and I'm also really hyped to see what other amazing things Costgear comes up with. I think they have a really cool thing going so far, and I'm really excited to see where they go in the future. And that just about does it for me, so thank you all so, so much for watching this video, and I hope that it was helpful or entertaining at least in some way. I highly recommend checking out Costgear and what they have to offer for any of your next cosplay projects, and all of their links to their website and their social media will be down in the description box below, so check them out. If you end up treating yourself to any of their goodies, you can use my discount code UPTOWN to get 10% off. I want to say a massive thank you to Costgear for sending me these products to review, and again, thank you to you guys for all of the unending support. It means the absolute world to me. But that's gonna do it, so thanks again for watching, and I will see you all next time. Take care!